Good morning and welcome to our live event on February 25th. This morning I am really excited um, to be sharing with you a blog article by the author Barbara Ketty and it's called Redefining Fibromyalgia Links to Anxiety and the Highly Sensitive Person. Um, <clears throat> I read this uh, article yesterday and actually am uh, engaged with this, this blogger because she is reviewing my book um, currently. But I read that article and I was uh, stunned and amazed by her insight into for herself the links to anxiety in the highly sensitive person. And I'm going to bring that article up so that you can see it. Um, and I believe it is here. So I'm going to start this. And hopefully you'll be able to, to um, read this um, if you look closely or expand it. But <clears throat> Her first line right here is, I have begun to think of fibromyalgia as an extreme case of prolonged anxiety that began in early life, perhaps in utero, or even as an inherited gene. And then down um, a little bit, she says, I have become convinced that fibromyalgia is another word for heightened anxiety. She goes on to say later in the article, I have explored and compared the symptoms of fibromyalgia from the hundreds of comments on this site. My own experience and the research I have undertaken with the symptoms, or to be more positive, the characteristics of both the highly sensitive person and the anxiety prone individual, and they are basically the same. The symptoms of fibromyalgia and those people who are highly sensitive and anxiety prone. She goes on to list a whole bunch of symptoms that um, people with fibromyalgia have in common. But why this is such a valuable um, insight for me to, to be reading about is that this is what my book Fibromyalgia Relief is based on. The observation of Ginevra Lipton, Dr. Ginevra Lipton in her book, Figuring Out Fibromyalgia, where she says all the symptoms of fibromyalgia basically boil down to the fight flight stress response being stuck in the on position. <clears throat> now, Barbara Ketty is the author of Women and Fibromyalgia. She's also a PhD. She's a professor. She's a nurse, um, has had fibromyalgia herself for 40 years. So here's a person speaking from a lot of research on her part, a lot of experience with other people, and a lot of personal experience. So this identification by her um, of the similarity, or basically saying that fibromyalgia is another word for heightened anxiety, um, is a very meaningful finding for me. Now Dr. Lipton, in her book, Figuring Out Fibromyalgia, wrote that medical science hasn't figured out yet how to turn off the fight flight free stress response. When we do that, she writes, we will have a cure. Now at the bottom of um, the article here by Barbara Ketty, she writes, she's reviewed two books um, for this article. And one is Stossel's My Age of Anxiety, that's by Scott Stossel. And the other is Smith's uh, Monkey Mind. But at the end of the article, she says her real only critique um, of Stossel's book is that he only briefly touches on the issue of neuroplasticity, which is, in my view, the main hope for us, whichever label we have attached to our challenges. The ability of the brain to change is one of the exciting findings of the last several decades. And it's certainly that finding of neuroplasticity that I'm using in fibromyalgia relief but it's a special part of neuroplasticity. The standard understanding of neuroplasticity, and I'm way oversimplifying that, but it's just that the brain can rewire um, to create new learning. And used to be believed that that uh, was only possible during childhood, and then the brain kind of got set up, and then it worked with what the brain was. The finding of neuroplasticity was the brain can continue to change and learn for our entire life. But what I've based memory or fibromyalgia relief on, my book and the ICE method, is the finding of memory reconsolidation. And that's a very specific 
and important finding, especially um, for if you're going to relate fibromyalgia to heightened anxiety. And if you're going to relate it to anxiety that began in early life, perhaps even in utero. Because the understanding of neuroscience has also been, until about the year 2000, that once a memory is created, it is fixed in the brain for the rest of our life. So if we're a highly anxious person, we've had experiences in our life that make it make sense to be highly anxious, to have our fight, flight, stress response turned on because there may be something dangerous in our external world that we need to pay attention to. Okay, I believe that this system that we have is set up and makes sense in terms of the um, experiences we've had. And the understanding of neuroscience is that those things um, glue together with emotional molecules called peptides at the synapse, connecting brain cells together so that we have memories of our experiences. And if those are such that we end up highly anxious or in a, in a highly anxious or highly sensitive state all the time, well then our fight, flight, freeze stress response is, is going to be turned on all the time. So what does memory reconsolidation add to the equation? Prior to memory reconsolidation, we believe that the best we could do was create some new habit or a new workaround or a new learning, right? A new set of brain cells and synapses that gave us an alternative to the old way of being or the old way of thinking or the old experience. <clears throat> and that's been very effective. In fact, we use this all the time. Every time we learn something new, we are building a new neural pathway in our brain. But the critical and the important difference with memory reconsolidation is that it is not about building a new pathway. It is actually about replacing the old stored emotional peptide in a memory that we used to believe was permanent for the rest of our life. The discovery of memory reconsolidation showed us that at the laboratory level, you can actually go in and activate an old memory. And when you activate that memory by remembering it, by identifying it, as I say in my ICE method, it becomes active, labile. For the next four hours, the chemistry, the emotional peptide that was stored in the original experience, it actually needs to be resynthesized if that memory is going to remain a memory. Okay, that's Joseph Ledoux in his book, The Synaptic Self. In an early, the earliest finding actually I could find in a book that discussed this or even mentioned it. So what they found was you've got four hours to change the molecule that's in there so that instead of resynthesizing with the same old emotion, you can resynthesize it with a different molecule and a person can lose their fear of that memory or they can lose the emotion of that memory and it can be replaced by calm. But it turns out only the memory that you go and activate becomes labile for these next four hours and mostly since we don't know this process we don't do the process and so it resynthesizes in the same way and we experience the world as that accident that happened to me that made me so afraid I've always been afraid of it for these last decades, and I always will be. And that actually is our very common experience. But the understanding of memory reconsolidation is that if we pay attention to, if we identify an old anxiety, an old trauma, an old place that a sensitivity developed, it's actually labile. It's fragile now for four hours. And then I have two more steps in the ice method, right? You move out to a different state where it whatever you are consciously paying attention to, you are creating an emotional peptide that corresponds to that. If you're paying attention to the old memory, you're feeling that fear or whatever that emotion is. It's creating that chemistry in your brain right now and it's going to be used to fill back in that synapse. And so you're going to continue to feel fear around that memory. If instead you move into a calm state, a meditative state, where you turn off your fight, flight, freeze, stress response, you are producing emotional peptides that are calm and peaceful. 
So how would you bring that into the synapse? By a conscious observation. If you observe back on that memory, literally, there's a chemical reaction that's happening. The old peptide of anger or fear or sadness or whatever is replaced by this peptide of calm that doesn't have an emotional charge to it. It's just calm and peace. Now, I've watched this process happen over and over and over again in the people that I work with, including people who have fibromyalgia. And issues that have been um, anxiety causing or stress causing for decades, based on experiences that have happened long, long ago, become issues that no longer carry a charge. Now, when that happens, when your fight, flight, stress response is no longer triggered by that past event, your body, your present moment bodily cells do not need to put their energy on protecting you from that anymore. If you do this process about the emotions and the experiences that are charged in your past until you reach a calm state, your fight, flight, stress response turns off. And when you find another piece that brings your stress up, you do this process again, and it becomes calm. And it will stay calm unless you go in and do a process to change out peptides in the same way that you did this with changing the agitated ones to calm. So this is actually much more than simply the neuroplasticity finding that we could build new neural networks for our whole lifetime. Now that's an amazing and wonderful thing. But in terms of removing the stressors from our life, from the past, that continue to impact our present moment, I believe it's memory reconsolidation that's the most valuable discovery, the most valuable laboratory insight that we have to work with. It's counterintuitive. We don't experience life this way. We consider, usually, the things that happen in our past, we're going to continue to feel that same emotion about them. And indeed we do, unless some conscious process happens, such that the memory is activated, and then we move to a different emotional state, and then within four hours, we observe back on that original agitated state. In that case, memory reconsolidation will happen, will actually resynthesize new peptides into the synapses of that old memory and our emotional experience of it will have changed. That I believe is the promise of how we can treat fibromyalgia, which Barbara Ketty is saying is the same as high anxiety. It's a remarkable article. You can find it over at womenandfibromyalgia.com and just click on her blog page, and you'll see Redefining Fibromyalgia, Links to Anxiety, and the Highly Sensitive Person. All right. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy that. Again, the article, womeninfibromyalgia.com, is her website. Um, if you read below in the description of this video, you'll see a link at the bottom of the description to um, the exact blog article. Um, I totally invite your attention to this um, and to see how it really does form a description which fibromyalgia relief and the ICE method address. All right, thanks a lot.